next. Do that with the capsule. It's very. Uh, remember, the capsule falls under the big heading glycocalyx. So the glycocalyx can be two types. It can be the capsule proper, or it could be a slime layer. Proteins, polysaccharides, combination. What are major uh, functions for glycocalyx? Right, for a capsule, let's say. It prevents phagocytosis. We talked about it in chapter 15 and chapter 3. So prevention prevents phagocytosis. Will be another one. Starts with a name. Attachment. Attachment, right? And the, the, the organism that comes to mind is a strep. Streptococcus mutans causes dental caries, that's the attachment portion. Streptococcus pneumoniae is the one where you have RNS strains. So attachment. Nothing more about capsules. Mm -hmm. True or false, they, uh, uh, they, pr they, they protect uh, from lysis. Capsules. What's, which structure in the cell will protect against lysis? Would that be the capsule? Cell Not the membrane. Oh, yeah. The cell wall. The cell wall, right? Because the capsule, for the most part, is water soluble. I'm sorry, this is the water. Uh, but it's not rigid. It's just slimy, organized slime. So this does not protect uh, against at least lysis, but it prevents phagocytosis, prevents attach, uh, promotes attachment, and so on. Uh, there's a part about the nucleoid and plasmids and ribosomes, these will deal with in chapter 8, because that is the topic of chapter 8 in more detail. Um, if I remember correctly, then there's a section about uh, inclusion bodies. Here you have to, for inclusion bodies, uh, again, be able to, inclusion bodies, you have two types, you have those that are differentially soluble, and those that are enclosed by an onionid membrane. And list the examples we talked about. So, uh, and remember, the non-unit membrane is one that is mostly proteins. Because what I erased is the unit membrane, where you have two layers, phospholipid and protein. Non-unit means one layer, and usually protein. Uh, inclusion bodies. Uh, so any questions about, about this? Uh, I think appendages come next. With appendages, we'll start with the line. Not a lot you need to know about the line. But like, if you were to describe them with one word, function-wise, what would that be? Does so one remember? Not movement. Sorry? Attachment, exactly. So pili, attachment, that's the function, that's a big word to remember. Two types, you have the sex and you have the common. The common are also called fembriae. So that would be another thing. The sex are also called, such as an F2, fertility, right? Fertility pili, F pili. Don't worry about numbers, but relative numbers. So in other words, I don't expect to know that the sex is usually one to three or one to four, whereas this one could be in the thousands, although it's very easy to remember. This one is more, right? but small. This one is few, but large. There. And uh, true or false, it's mostly a gram-positive phenomenon. Pili are uh, found much more commonly among gram-positives. You would have to say no. Why? Because where, where did we discuss, even if you forgot, hopefully you remember it from another chapter, where did we discuss F pili? Which organism did we discuss it in? Sorry? Sorry? Which? No. Well, gonorrhea has no. Gonorrhea has this. Right? Not the F pili. E. coli, exactly. That was the chapter 9 
f plus f minus h of r f minus so you have to remember this is gram negative for the most part not gram positive few gram positives have it. Uh, f uh, f per i I'm sorry uh, uh, flagella same thing you be able to while you're studying after you're studying you can't do it before you're studying but uh, flagella be able to on a piece of paper or whatever be able to somehow link uh, various concepts with flagella true or false all flagella all flagella all bacteria are motile false all motile bacteria have flagella also false right what you have to remember is that motility is not found in all bacteria but when it is found it's most commonly due to flagella but not exclusively so flagella motility right that would be the the function you have to also uh, first of all so for example I don't know we can talk about arrangement with the arrangements this is where you get into the trichus part right mono peri monotrichus peritrichus lophotrichus amphitrichus right so you have to be able to know which is which uh, so this is the trichus star part so to speak uh, structure this is where you have the three parts right remember we have the filament the hook and the basal body filament hook and then basal body and you have to be able uh, it's going to be a nicer picture on the exam but if you were uh, given a let's say uh, It's going to be a nicer one. Right. Okay, something like this. Right, this is the flagellum. But my question could be something like, is this a gram positive or a gram negative organism? Now, at this point, you probably haven't had a chance to start studying or remember this one. But you look at this one. This one has four rings. One, two, three, and four. Minus, I mean, I'll, uh, I'll have the C ring here, too. So it has one, two, this is one ring, and this is the fourth one. That has got to be a gram negative, because the gram positive will only have the bottom. So all of these are found in a gram negative, but only Bs are found in the gram positive. So th if you have that many rings, it's got to be a gram negative. Or I might ask you to relate concepts. Uh, let's say instead of asking you directly is this from a gram negative I can ask you for example uh, uh, this organism will stain pink after a gram stain right? it is a gram negative it's gonna stain pink after the gram stain which reminds me you have to know the colors too you now some colors are more straightforward than others I'm not gonna ask you what the color is crystal violet uh, but I might ask you what color is carbon fuchsia right because you are probably are doing it, right? Carbofuxin is, is reddish. That's the primary stain where? In the acid, it's in the acid fast uh, stain. Uh, let's see. You also have to know, or true or false, these two rings are essential for motility. False, why? <laughs> Because if something is essential for motility, it's going to be found everywhere. Right? These are just sort of like a bearing to get uh, the, the, the thing in them. Um, motility, chemotaxis, you have to be able to know the difference between positive and negative, and then be able to tell the difference between, so for example, true or false, the bacterium spends more time running than tumbling, true or false. Bacterium spends more, a bacterium spends more time running than tumbling. That would be, I mean, imagine it would be a dull, very sad existence if you tumble more than you run. Tumble usually is a negative connotation. But remember, a tumble, what's happening? It's running, 
tumbling, running, tumbling, running. Tumbling is a change of direction. And you have to remember the, the clockwise versus counterclockwise rotation. So when it runs, it's counterclockwise, it's moving in a straight line. When it does not rotate counterclockwise, it's rotating clockwise. The, fun, the bundle falls apart, it starts on another run. There are also uh, the other types of motility that you have to remember. For example, how does Proteus move by swarming? Uh, how does E. coli move by swimming? E. coli is your typical organism. Does 